The markets took a dump today and they kept on dumping. This is because we got news today about the catalyst for tomorrow, and this is going to be a major catalyst. So if you guys are unfamiliar with what is going on today, why the stock market fell, what the catalyst is tomorrow, and how you can make money off of it, then you wanna watch this video in its entirety because we're gonna be going over all of that. Now, we could see a flash crash tomorrow. We could see a flash rally tomorrow. It really comes down to one simple principle, and that is the balance sheet runoff, or if they just come out and sell assets, or if they don't announce any of that, you're going to see a big move to the upside. So we got to go over how that will affect AMC, how that will affect the broad markets, as well as your portfolio. And as always, how to profit from this information. Who cares if you have the information, if you don't know how to profit from it, doesn't help anyone. So we're going to get into all of that as well as the data specifically around AMC stock. So let's get into this video. As always, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you guys find value out of this video. And if you guys want to come trade with us, link down below in the pinned comment. We hit fat bags today, baby, because we have been in anticipating this move to the downside. If you watch this channel as well, then you were already expecting a move down uh, today. But nonetheless, Let's get into this situation. So the S&P was down 1.24%. AMC down about 9.5% if you include this move that we are seeing in after hours. We're sitting right on our key level at $21 per share. So that is really, really good. But if we see a flash crash tomorrow, I want you guys to be fully prepared. You will see AMC stock come down. If you see a 4 or 5% down day on the markets, you will see AMC stock come down. Do not be fooled by that. AMC does not live in its own bubble, neither does any other stock. Now, I don't know if the markets are going to go down 4 or 5%, but that would be along the lines of a flash crash. And that is really due to, if it happens, what the Fed is going to say tomorrow. Now, you had Fed Daily come out and say today, and we went over this in the last video, that essentially they're going to have to raise rates uh, more aggressively than 25 basis points, that they're going to probably have to go to in 50 basis point increments. They're going to have to raise rates at a dramatically faster pace than we have seen in a very long time. You got to go back to the 70s to see these kind of rate increases, but the markets don't even care about that. The markets can rally when rates go up, even at a very aggressive pace. But what the markets don't like is that balance sheet runoff. You had Fed Brainerd as well as, which is like the second in line to Fed Jerome Powell. So it was a big deal when she said the balance sheet uh, will likely need to be reduced at a rapid pace starting next month, starting at the next meeting. You also had Fed Daly that came out and said, yes, we need to start reducing the balance sheet. And they have been more so on the dovish side. So when you see the doves start to say, hey, we got to reduce the balance sheet and we have to do it now, that is not good. Not good. And that's exactly how the markets looked at it. Like this is not good. Now, how did we know the markets were already going to fall? That's why you want to subscribe to this channel. Trust me, you want to subscribe, you want to be up on all this information, you would have had the knowledge and the opportunity here to make money off of this move today, was because Fed Williams, which is one of the more hawkish members, if not the most hawkish member on the Fed board, he came, he came out on Saturday and said, hey, we're probably going to have to start reducing the balance sheet by May. That was your signal right there. That was the signal that is what is going to happen. When they are specific like that, you need to pay attention. And to be quite honest with you guys, the S&P is still up a lot from where it just was at a couple weeks ago. This is a bear market rally. They are sharp. They can be violent. They can last days or weeks. But the overall downtrend does remain. So we have a lot of meat on the bone to see a big move uh, to the downside or possibly to the upside now if the fed meetings at meetings minutes at 2 p.m they come out and say something crazy the markets have not expected like the fed's going to reduce their balance sheet say 300 billion dollars per month starting in may that's where you're getting into a flash crash like scenario because the markets have not priced it in even with this move down today 1.24 percent the markets are not expecting what could come out tomorrow now, I could be wrong. They might not say anything about reducing the balance sheet in the Fed minutes. That is very, very possible. If that's the case, the markets will rally very hard. So I wouldn't make any firm conclusions about what is going to happen. I will tell you that it is definitely more so skewed to a downside risk here, especially since the markets have already rallied so much. But the way that I would really trade this is 
kind of getting both sides because if there's no news, like I said, about the balance sheet reduction, if they're just talking about it, there's nothing that comes out definitive tomorrow at 2 p.m. during the Fed minutes, markets will rally off of that. You might want to have some upside exposure. You might want to have more downside exposure uh, that, than upside exposure, in my personal opinion. That's what I've been doing. I got some Apple puts. I got some spy puts that are doing very, very well, very, very well today. Uh, but this is not a financial recommendation. If you buy options, if you trade anything based off of a YouTube video, you will lose money. Whatever you put into options, especially the shorter time frame, if you're buying options for April 8th or April 14th or April 22nd or May 20th or June, you're going to lose money. The odds of you making money are like 20 or 30%. So there is money to be made. There is going to be a lot of volatility. I'm going to profit from it. Hopefully you guys profit from it as well. But it's not for everybody. It's not for everybody. This is not something you put your whole account into. If anything, it's something maybe you throw a hundred bucks on both sides, right? Thousand percent on a hundred dollars will give you a thousand dollars. Not a bad return. So that's my take on it. That's kind of how you guys can profit from it. I like the Apple puts, not a recommendation. Do what you guys want to do. Options are not for everybody. And you're more so likely than not going to lose all of your money if you do trade them. So be pre fully prepared for that. Just want you guys to know. Now, let's talk about what could happen with AMC stock. Now, if we do see a flash crash, I would expect, I would expect, and a flash crash, 4 to 5% down on the markets tomorrow. Uh, AMC to take a move down to about $18. Now, the interesting thing about tomorrow is that the catalyst doesn't come out until 2 p.m. So if the catalyst doesn't come out till 2 p.m., you likely won't see a huge move in one direction or the other until that big catalyst does come out. Then you're going to see the big move. So we might actually get maybe if it's really bad news, we get really bad catalysts. You might fall two or three percent on the markets and then you might see another downward move on Thursday. So it might be spread out since we're only going to have two hours left of trading if we do get a really bad catalyst. Like I said, if we get a really good catalyst, then I would expect AMC to break back above $23.50 per share. It's going to be violent either way it does go, but lots of opportunity to make money nonetheless. Now we're going to come back to the technical outlook that we are looking at right now after we go over the data that you guys need to know. And I just want to repeat this for like the fifth time in case some people don't watch these videos all the time and they're just watching this one because, you know, they, they seen the title and they think it's going to be important or whatever the case is. The balance sheet reduction is so important because we've never reduced the balance sheet before. We've really only added to it since 2007, 2008. The balance sheet, $800 billion. Now it's $9 trillion. Fed reducing their balance sheet, aka selling bonds or letting their bonds that are maturing, their three to three month to two year bonds. Um, when those mature, they're not going to be putting those dollars back into bonds. So what happens starts to sell bonds. They start to get rid of their bonds. That makes yields go up. That makes the cost to borrow money for me, you, businesses, stocks, right? Makes it more expensive. So that's why the markets really freak out about that. That's even more so, um, you know, tightening liquidity than even the Fed raising rates. Now, the only time we ever seen this reduction in the balance sheet in a meaningful way was 2018, 2019, and the S&P 500 fell about 25%. So we really don't have good history to go off of when you're thinking about the balance sheet reduction. 25% drop in the markets, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's not good to look back on. Whereas if the Fed raises rates, we know stocks can do very well in rate hike cycles, especially a lot of growth stocks. So, you know, you just gotta, you just gotta be smart about this. You gotta take into consideration your own financial situation the reason i'm talking about this so much though is because i think there is a lot of potential on both sides of the equation now let's talk about the fed rate monitor tool let's see exactly what is going on for the day and you're looking at the probability for a half percent rate hike at about 78.3 percent which looks like that's what is going to happen so the markets have kind of already priced this in as well as another 50 base point rate hike at the june meeting so two back-to-back -back 50 base point rate hikes is what the markets are expecting firmly 78.3 percent on both of these it's expected the balance sheet reduction that's not expected so 
Keep that in mind. You know, you're seeing the markets come down and you likely will as we do get closer to this Fed meeting. And as you do see the probability for a half percent rate hike go up, people start to talk about recessions. People start to actually talk about this half percent rate hike on CNBC or Fox Business. That's where you're going to see things really start to uh, get priced into the market as far as the actual stock prices, because it's priced into the market, but like people expect it, but the markets really are not reacting to it. They've, they've kind of been in this uh, risk on mode for a very long time, especially in a lot of the large cap stocks. But it, nonetheless, none of this, you know, recommendation. I, I have to say it very many times because you, you, I know some people are going to put their whole portfolio into some of these options and they will lose money and then uh, get mad at me for, for just speaking the facts here. But nonetheless, that's what we do have for tomorrow. The Fed minutes, that's at 2 p.m. And then on Thursday, you do have a lot of Fed speakers that comes out. Come out. So you could even wait, honestly, until after the Fed meeting to figure out which direction it's going to be. And then you could trade that direction if that's something you wanted to do. You're going to have those Fed speakers on Thursday, and they're probably going to hammer home on that hawkishness. So be uh, prepared for that at the same time. Now, as far as AMC specifically, let's go over this information. And you did see a lot of borrow shares for the day of about 2.8 million, cost bar max of 3.94%. Uh, current shares that are sold short of uh, 108.21 million, short interest of free float 20.99%, utilization of 100%, and days to cover at 2.46. So, shorts, they're not covering. They're going to take this opportunity to load up on their short positions. And that's fucking great for us hallelujah to that load up on them short positions baby because eventually when the market tide does turn and investors start to buy these more risky assets amc is going to be primed to benefit from that now as far as the option activity positive order value of 50 percent 22 orders totaling 4.31 million dollars so even though we were down nine and a half percent today positive order value of 50 percent is not all too shabby and like I went over in last video, the max pain is $22 per share by the end of this week. But let's go back to the technical analysis and let's take a look at this briefly. AMC coming up a little bit here in after hours, nothing too crazy, but I want to see us remain above $21 per share. If um, the situation isn't as bad as the markets expect tomorrow, which like I said, I do think there's going to be a down downside biased uh, to what comes out tomorrow. I don't think it's necessarily going to be a good thing uh, for the markets then I would expect the stock to drop to about 18, this 50 day moving average. If it's really good, it's gonna break above 23. It's likely to gonna go back to $25 here in the next couple trading days. So that's really the range that I'm looking at in between 25 and 18. I don't expect it to go any lower than that unless something is just ridiculous. If if, if they say like, uh, you know, $500 billion a month, which that's like not even reasonable, um, then you would, uh, we would be talking about something, something totally different. Then you could go to 15 on AMC because the markets would drop likely 10% in a day. Very, very unlikely though. Right. So that's really the range that I am looking at. I'm going to go ahead and take this trend line off because we are not in a uh, upward trajectory right now. You could draw the trend line if you guys want to, but I'm not a fan of redoing uh, trend lines. We have seen the volume come in. It's went away and you see the share price coming down. Now, I will tell you, it's basically common sense, but people forget this. The stocks don't always just go up or they don't always just go down. It, it felt like in here, AMC only went up and now it feels like AMC is only going down. Now the tide will turn here in the short term and in the midterm. Once the fundamental business does continue to improve, more blockbuster movies come out, more catalysts come out. That's really for the midterm. The short term here is just going to be a bounce because we have fallen so much. As long as the fundamentals and the business is operational, there's a reason to buy the stock at these levels. So, I do expect a bounce regardless of what does happen. That will likely be next week, though, if we don't see a bounce this week due to the Fed minutes. Now, uh, the RSI is at 52.13 and the MACD is kind of, you know, diverging, becoming uh, on, on the bearish side nonetheless. But that's really all you guys need to know. Remember that range of $18 at the lower end and about $25 at the higher end. That's kind of what I expect for tomorrow and for Thursday. So nonetheless, that is going to be all for this video. I don't want to bore you guys with anything else. I know not everybody likes that economic data or the broad market outlook, but it's very important and it will make you guys money if you learn how to monitor these macro events that do 
uh, happen. And macro means everything. America, the world, or just micro, like a certain catalyst, like the Fed, just trying to put that all together to paint a picture will make you a lot of money that's what we do down below in the trading group if you guys want to come join us link in the pinned comment as well as go ahead follow me on twitter as well so thank you guys for tuning in love and appreciate you guys hope you guys make some money off of this video if you do that's great if you don't don't listen to me don't trade options uh but yeah come join us on a live stream 10 p.m to 11 p.m eastern standard time thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one